Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. For fans of gothic images, I'm going to show you how to make this horrific, gothic-looking warning to all who pass by. I provided a Photoshop file for you to download so you can follow along. Its link is located in the video's description or project files. It includes this medieval-looking wood background and this cracked painted metal texture. The size is 1280 by 720 pixels with a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. If your foreground and background colors aren't black and white respectively, click on the small overlapping box icon or press the letter D on your keyboard. Open your horizontal type tool and choose a font. I'm using a font called Kaiserzeit Gutisch, for which I included a link as well. For this example, I'm using a size of 177 points, sharp, left alignment, and black for the color. The color isn't important since we'll be replacing it soon with the cracked paint texture. Type out your text. To reposition it, click on your Move tool and move it. Control click or command click on the thumbnail of your text to make it into a selection. Make the texture active and visible. Click on the layer mask button to make a layer mask of the selection next to the active layer. Click on the FX button and choose bevel and emboss. The style is inner bevel, the technique is chisel hard, the depth is 100%, the direction is up, the size is 6 pixels, and the highlight opacity is 100%. Click Drop Shadow. Make the distance 9 pixels. Depending on the size of your text, you may want to adjust the amounts we're setting in the layer styles. Next, we'll add bloody streaks to the background. Control click or command click on the New Layer button to make a new layer below the active layer. Hide the original text layer and the top layer. We'll fill the empty layer with black and since black is the foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Go to Filter, Render, and Fibers. Make the variance 10 and the strength 15. If you don't like the way the particular fibers look in your window, press Randomize until you like one. Then click OK. Press Ctrl or Command L to open the Levels window. Change the Input White Level to 200 and click OK. Open your Channels panel and click on this circular dotted icon to make a selection of all the tonal values of your image. Open back up your Layers panel and drag the Fiber layer to the trash since we now have its selection. We need to invert it. To do this, press Ctrl or Command Shift I. Click on the New Layer button to make a new layer. Click on the foreground color and type in 8C0404. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill it with a foreground color. To delete the selection, press Ctrl or Command D. Change the blend mode to darken and the opacity to 80%. Make your texture text visible. We want to hide the blood streaks everywhere, but keep them below the text. Click on the layer mask button to make a layer mask next to the active layer. Open your brush tool and make the size 100 pixels and the hardness 0%. The blend mode is normal and the opacity is 100%. Now brush over the streaks above the text to hide them.
brush over the sides as well. To make your brush smaller, press the left bracket key on your keyboard. Continue to brush away all the streaks, but keep them below your text. Next, we'll add some blood stains to the text itself. Make a composite snapshot of your image by making your top layer active and pressing Control Shift Alt E on a PC or Command Shift Option E on a Mac. Let's brighten the overall image by pressing Control Alt L on a PC or Command Option L on a Mac. When this window pops up, press Enter or Return. Make a copy of it by pressing Control or Command J. Go to your layer mask and press and hold Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac as you drag a copy of it next to the top layer. Click on the thumbnail to make it active and increase your brush size. I'm increasing it to 100 pixels. Depending on the size of your text, you may want to adjust this number. Keep the hardness 0%. Change the blend mode to linear burn and the opacity to 20%. Now brush over a few areas of your text, especially the darker rusted parts. Make a composite snapshot again and make a copy of it. Hide the copy and make the original composite snapshot layer active. Click on the adjustment layer button and choose Levels. Reduce the output white to 85. This darkens the entire image. Make the top layer visible and active. Open your elliptical marquee tool, go to the top left corner and drag across a selection to the bottom right corner. Go to Select and Transform Selection. Go to the top middle of the transform and when you see a vertical double arrow, press and hold Shift and Alt on a PC or Shift and Option on a Mac as you drag it down. This squeezes the transform in at the top and bottom so it's closer to your text. To center it over your text, press the up arrow key on your keyboard to move it straight up. Then press enter or return. Go to select and refine edge. There are seven view modes from which to choose. I'm using the on black mode. Feather your selection to an amount you like. For this example, I'll feather it to 70 pixels. Output it as a layer mask. Then click OK. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.